Stitching a buttonhole on the Janome 4618 domestic sewing machine, this is what we do. You need to get the R foot, which is the buttonhole foot for the machine. You need to open it up and put your button into it, like that. You need to then take the top thread on your machine and thread it through the R foot right at the front here, right at the very, very front. Then we need to take off the foot that's currently on our machine by pressing the little button at the back. And we need to make sure that clamp clamps onto this metal bar that's right at the front, front of the R foot. Making sure that this thread doesn't get caught up in the mechanism. You can use the presser foot lever to lift the uh, clamp to its highest position. You can ratchet up um, the, the presser foot lever and then that should snap like that down onto the R foot. And then take your two threads, about 30 centimetres of each, and make sure they're out at the back of your machine. Now we need to change the settings on our sewing machine when we sew a buttonhole. So we're going to look at the front of our sewing machine and um, decide what to do here. We've got to put the setting onto buttonhole, BH, and we do that with the stitch selector dial, which is on the side of the machine. And as we turn the stitch selector dial, I'm turning it towards me, we can see the indicator moving along to the left until we get to BH for buttonhole. And on this little image here, there are numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's telling us that there are four processes involved in making this buttonhole. We'll start at number one with the bar tack at the front, then we'll do number two, stitch backwards on one side of the buttonhole, number three, which is the bar tack at the end, and number four, coming back to the beginning again at the other side of the buttonhole. Now, if we lift up the top of our, the lid on the top of our machine, we can see what is recommended here for our stitch width and our stitch length and our tension. So now we're going to decide uh, which stitch width and stitch length we're going to use. So I'm going to go with the recommendations and put the width on five and then move the length guide down to somewhere in the region of the buttonhole diagram. And we'll see what it looks like on a test piece. Then what's really important is that we pull down the sensor so that it, it touches the inside of this part of the buttonhole foot. And actually that little image on it is, um, there's a picture of a buttonhole on there too. Um, not so easy to see on our film, but it is there. Um, so, yeah, I'll just show you again. You pull it down. Really important. We'll put our fabric in the machine and put the presser foot down and start with the needle down. And we know, because we looked um, at the image of the buttonhole earlier, we know we're going to be sewing backwards um, to do this buttonhole. And we just put our foot down and automatically the buttonhole should be created. And it has been. I just did a few extra stitches at the end to tie off the threads. So that has been done. We raise the foot, we pull our work out, and we cut the threads and then if we're going to do a number of buttonholes what's really important is that we reset the machine so to do that we come back to the stitch selector uh, dial and we turn it 
and it makes a crunch but don't worry about that. Do you see here it says reset, we turn it to 1 and then we come back to BH again and then we know that um, the machine will sew us another buttonhole exactly the same size if we do it again. And you need to open up the buttonhole in the usual way. There are a number of different ways you can do that. I'll just cut this one with little embroidery scissors and hopefully not cut any of the threads. And then just fray some of the little fabric. And cut any ends off. And you should find if you take your button out of the foot when you've finished all your buttonholes. This buttonhole should be the perfect size Oops. for this button.